let's just go. I'm just gonna sneak out the entrance over here. How y'all doing? I decided to start this video at 3 in the morning instead of sleeping another 8 hours and starting at 11 in the morning. We picked up a special high value heavy articulating trailer cargo. Let's see how this goes. I did upgrade my truck a little bit on the last video to make it slightly more adept at heavy cargo loads, but I don't know if I have the power to do this one. This is going to be interesting. But if they give me an opportunity to make $80,000, I'm going to take it. We're starting out in Grenada. Mississippi. This load is going to New York State. I forget what town. So we are going to be going over some mountains. The Appalachians are in our way. And it is so dark. See anything. This is going to be too long of a trip to do all in one video. I am going to start dividing my days up into separate videos so you'll see one day's worth of travel on a video might take me two maybe three days to get that far who knows maybe four um, I don't even, it doesn't say what today is but it's due on Monday it is only gonna take 24 hours to get there 1100 miles so we shall see if this is enough. The hills traversal could be better. But I'm still going to take the job. We shall see. If it takes me longer to make 80,000 bucks, I'll deal with it. Even if it's late, I'll take the penalty. 80,000 bucks is 80,000 bucks. commented on how dark it is driving over here and now I gotta pick up a trailer It is really dark out here. No pictures at this pickup. I'm just gonna be driving out. All right, stop stalling. Let's go. trailer. I did not hook up the trailer. Oops. There we go. My goodness. 
I actually was working today and took a little comp time to come home early just so I could play this game. And here I am, haven't even started the trip, I'm already making mistakes. It's still a great day. surprised how I cannot see anything on this road except for what's directly in front of me I don't know it seems darker for some reason man I might live yeah you know what I'm just gonna There's no glares on my monitor or anything, it's just, for some reason, it's just really, really dark on the edges of the screen today. Maybe it's just because I haven't done a, maybe it's just because I haven't done a night run in a while. Well, it seems to be pulling okay there on flat ground, leaving the yard. It's about four o'clock. Where I live, the roads don't get really busy until about five in the morning. That's an awful lot of cars for one intersection at four in the morning. Come on, guy. to get out some point. Here's where the truck is going to suffer. This ought to be a good video. If I'm going to have this much trouble getting up hills. Seems like it's starting to lighten up around the edges now. Maybe it's just the the nighttime darkness that I haven't been used to because I've been doing a lot of day trips lately. I think this is my first articulating trailer on the new American Truck Simulator profile. So this will be fun. I hope I don't have to back this thing up. I did have to back it up a little bit back there to get out of the road, but not very much. I have had to back up one of these trailers before. It is a little more difficult. Basically, I'm using the I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain. You basically just turn the steering wheel the opposite way that you normally would with a trailer. I don't know, 
out. You just have to see it to, to understand how it works. I can't really explain it. You're basically using the segmented part of the trailer, backing it up like a normal single trailer, and that's what affects that double part of the articulating trailer to go where you want it to go. It's nearly impossible. I've never been able to back one straight up, but you kind of serpentine it backwards, snake it backwards, and if it gets a little too sideways, you pull forward a little bit and try again, and eventually you can get backed up. It just takes a lot longer. You've got to go a lot slower. This hill in second gear. I kind of figured this job would really strain the truck. And I don't really have the option to. I mean, you could always cancel a job and take the penalty. I don't even know what the camp, I don't even know what the penalty is. I've never canceled a job before, but that'll be the fun part of this trip, seeing if I have the patience to go this slow because of how heavy the load is. Looks like we're passing into Northland. I haven't been to Mississippi too many times in my life. I have been to Biloxi, the Gulfport area. Um, it was when I was really young. So I don't remember a lot about it. There was an alligator on the beach. Someone had to come and get that. Other than that, I don't remember much at all about Mississippi. There's a show on HGTV where they do those, they rehab those homes. It's in a little town in Mississippi. That's one of those towns I've always wanted to go to just to kind of see it. I'd like to retire somewhere down south. Mississippi has always been an option that's open in my mind. I kind of like to see how it is down there. I kind of get the idea that it's hot and muggy all the time. It'd be interesting to see what that climate is like down there. I think I might be able to get used to not having winters. I live up north, so four seasons in full effect and I definitely think I could live without winters well we're over 55 miles an hour that's pretty good in my book I didn't think we'd be able to get up I was doubting whether or not we'd be able to get up to 60 or not, but I'm 
glad he let me over. That was, uh, I didn't see that that lane was ending, into, ending until the last second. I'm glad he left me some space. Like I said, I came home work from work early, planning on playing the game. Uh, normally I'm the first one home to my house. My wife gets home from work a little later, the kids get home from school and work a little later. So I was expecting to be the only one at home so I could start my gaming. And I walked in the door, my wife was here, so that was a nice surprise. I asked her if she'd come up and do a video with me, take another ride. She said, not this trip, maybe, maybe some other time. She'll definitely be back. I have a lot of fun talking to her when she's in the cab. Uh, gives me more stuff to talk about. I don't know, I've never really, I've never planned a conversation with her when she's been in the cab with me. Things just kind of pop into my head and I ask her and you know, the conversation's been pretty free flowing so far. that being said, I've, I really liked doing those videos with her. I think it's different. I don't see a lot of people doing that. And I think it just makes the videos more fun. Definitely more fun to make. Hopefully they are more fun to watch or more interesting to watch. I would imagine 99% of the population of the world would think this is a stupid quote-unquote game to play. I like it. I just love driving. To me, driving is freedom. I do have a driver's license. I do have a truck. I can go outside and drive, but I like doing this too. Even though some people might not in understand the thrill of playing a video game where you sit behind the steering wheel and do something that they probably hate to do, most people probably see driving as a chore. I actually really like doing this. So. I'm going to keep doing it. My only struggle after I, since I've been playing this game, uh, I haven't had a struggle with the game. The game is going fine. My struggle has been thinking of things to talk about. I thought it'd be funny to start out the first few videos I did in silence so that people might watch a video and then be surprised that there's actually talking on it. Um, one of my goals in doing these YouTube videos is to never start a video with the words, hey guys, too many people and too many people that make and post YouTube videos start out with, hey guys, hey guys, hey guys. So that is going to be my goal. I think I did say that once in the middle of a video, and I don't remember if I edited it out or not, but I do remember that I stopped myself and went back and started the sentence over to say something different. Since I did that, I might have edited it out, because I really don't want to be saying hey guys at all during any of my videos. I'll start out with hello everybody, or how's everyone doing? If you catch me, let me know. Alright, that was a bit unfair to that guy. Curve was wrong. I couldn't see if there was anybody in that lane coming up, and I totally cut him off. But I'm sure he'll survive. when he's doing 70 down this road or up this hill and I'm struggling to maintain 60. But I was talking about um, not having much to say on these YouTube videos. I didn't really start the, the channel to give people advice or talk about trucking or talk about gaming in general. Just 
I just wanted to post videos and see where it went, see if I could do it. First of all, I didn't know if the technology was beyond me, capturing video games and posting them on the internet. Uh, I think I've proven that I can do that. I don't know if I can do it well, but I can do it. And, you know, I don't expect anybody to listen to what I'm saying or I don't expect anybody to care about what I have to say. If I were to say something on these videos, but that's not my intent, so it's not going to worry me if I don't have much to say. I just... Putting that out there, letting people know that's not really my intent, so don't expect it. Well, I might not have the strongest engine, but at least I'm stronger than that Kenworth back there.
I just slowed down a little and kept the accelerator to the floor and I'm barely maintaining 55. Everyone else has to slow down to go to the work zone. I'm just barely keeping up to the speed limit. That little work zone worked out pretty well. I don't know why anybody else was in the left lane. I don't know why nobody else was in the left lane. That was a little strange, but whatever. I'll use it to my advantage. I know in my home state it's illegal for big trucks to be in that third lane, but I guess that's the first lane over there, but... Hey, you want realism? Go buy a big truck and start driving. It's my channel. I get to use the third lane.
really having trouble seeing these lines on this road. My goodness, it's a very bright screen with a bright road. It's too dark at the beginning, now it's too late. If those cracks weren't in the road, I wouldn't be able to see anything. It's only when they turn that yellowy gold color that I can actually see the dotted lines. This truck is actually pulling way better than I thought it would. This heavy of a load, the way it took off on that first hill, I thought it was going to be a dog, but here we are, pulling at 70 miles an hour. She's doing okay. yesterday I was thinking about names for this truck and just out of the blue I said Vanessa because it starts with a V and that matches the Volvo that also starts with a V. Uh, I actually know a Vanessa, not close friends, but she was a friend from back when I was in high school or high school aged. She was a nice person, she was cute, I like her, we were friendly. I think I have a second cousin named Vanessa, or maybe it's Nessa. Um, actually, now that I think about it, yeah, it's just Nessa, it's not Vanessa. So I've only known one Vanessa in my whole life. Would you be offended if someone named their truck the same name as you? Not that they're naming it after you, but just the same name. I don't know. I don't think I'd be offended if someone named their car the same name as my first name. I mean, maybe if they named their dog the same name as my first name, I might be offended, especially if I knew them pretty well. And it's a pretty name. Uh, I hope one day this will be a nice looking pretty truck. And it's kind of curvy, so it could be a girl. Man, we are over 70 miles an hour. cruising at 73 or 74. Not bad. Hopefully making some good time to make up for those hills where we had to slow down to a crawl. It does sound like we're starting to struggle. starting to slow down.
I just realized we're on I-81. Let's see where this is taking us. Through Virginia, up through Maryland. Yes. So when I was in the Army, I was stationed in Maryland. Kind of like right there. I was definitely east of 81. Uh, Hagerstown, Maryland is on I-81. I was in between Hagerstown and Baltimore. A little town called Frederick right there. That's where I was stationed in the Army. I just had to check it real quick. I saw I was on I-81 and brought back some memories. I wanted to see if maybe my old town would be there, but it's not. I would have driven by just to see how detailed the map was there, but we'll press on. Since this truck is pulling pretty well, actually, let me check and see if I need a rest stop anytime soon. Um, since this truck is pulling pretty well, there's another rest stop right up the road, so I can at least go a little farther. Since the, I'll, I'll start the sentence for the third time. Since the truck is pulling pretty well, we should be able to make this trip in two days. Um, going to New York, New York, so I don't even have to travel very far through the state. That'll be good. Just right across the river. So let's say I could stop in the second to last stop before we get there that would be that one so we're not too far away from making our first stop for the day we'll stop right there uh, just inside the Virginia well not really just inside Virginia but a third of the way through the state of Virginia that's where we'll stop for the night and get our rest pass this one up we made that mistake a couple days ago where we drove by a rest stop and regretted it for the rest of the night. It was a little too early for me to stop and call it a night, so I, just, so I decided to push on and it came back to bite me. I passed that rest stop at 6 o'clock. I was thinking, oh, I'd like to drive until 9 o'clock. But after I passed that rest stop at 6 o'clock, I didn't see another rest stop for another 7 hours, maybe it was. I want to say I finally ended up stopping at 1 o'clock in the morning. That was the night that I was driving on fumes. I had no awake hours left. I was at triple zeros on my clock. That was a rough day. It made for a short day the next day, just a five hour run to finish the job, but I'm not gonna make that mistake again. We'll stop just over the line in Virginia, get our sleep, and then have a short run again the second day on this trip. This is the part of the country that I really loved. Being out on the east coast, we were on the eastern slope of the Appalachian Mountains in Maryland. Really love that part of the country. The winters weren't too harsh, the summers weren't too hot. It was just nice and temperate. Lots of stuff to do out in nature, lots of hiking trails, lots of mountain overlooks, stuff like that. Just a really cool area. I spent most of my, oh, I spent all of my time out in Maryland, but I would imagine it was the same in Virginia and Pennsylvania. Just a really great part of the country. So I noticed when I picked up this job, it said the engine doesn't have a retarder in this truck. So the thing I've been using must be the Jake brake. That is an exhaust brake. I don't know if this is my stop or not. No, it's going to be the next one. I did read how that works. 
Jake brake. You hear exhaust brake, you think it has something to do with the mufflers or catalytic converters or something with the manifolds. No, when they say exhaust brake, they mean the exhaust valves in the engine. Basically, it just, it's a system that holds open the exhaust valves during the power stroke. So some of the power from the detonation of the diesel fuel actually escapes out of the Ooh. exhaust valve. Not all of the energy is used to compress the, pris the, the piston down on the power stroke. So as long as you're in gear, it will slow you down. Even though you weigh 80,000 pounds and you're coasting downhill, it'll actually keep you from accelerating. And I learned that it's called a Jake Brake because the first company who either created it or was popular for making it, I don't know exactly what they had to do in the process, but the first popular exhaust brake was from the Jacobs company. So that's why it's called the Jake Brake. I don't know. I'm sure I'll get people telling me I'm all wrong and I don't understand it and that's not how it's done. I did read all the parts about master cylinders and slave cylinders and there being a small oil system above the the rocker arms and all that stuff, but I thought I'd simplify it. It made sense to me how it works. I just don't know if I'm the best at explaining it. But now that I've seen that this truck doesn't have a retarder, I'm going to have to go look that up and see what that is exactly. I picked a good stop to spot, or a good spot to stop. Okay, we'll talk. Right as I'm running out of energy, a little over an hour left, and it looks like we are at our stop. Oh no, I thought that was it. I saw that 81 sign pop up on the GPS. I thought that was our stop. A little farther. It'd be nice to gas up with a little bit of gas left in the tank too. Not be running on fumes. I did just upgrade the truck in the last video little bit bigger gas tank. I upgraded to aluminum wheels from the stock steel wheels. <sighs> so I'm enjoying the advantages of those upgrades that I made. Seventy-seven. I used to, when I used to drive home from Maryland, I used to take I-77 a little bit, where it joins up with I-70, through the mountains in Pennsylvania. It's funny the things that come rushing back from 20 years ago. I do remember the I-77 part where it connects with I-70 and they kind of join for a little bit. That's the spot where it's a really scenic area of Pennsylvania, south of Pittsburgh, I think. I think I got my directions right. Where the two sides of the road aren't at the same spot, like these two are connected. The oncoming traffic is you know, right next to the traffic lanes that I'm in. Where I-77 and I-70 are combined on the same road. The two halves of the road are diverged, different elevations. They kind of meander away and towards each other. It's actually a really cool stretch of road. It's some nice scenery up in the mountains. Of course, I wasn't driving a semi back then. I was just flying through the area in a Chevy Camaro. flying down the interstate. Always made good time in that thing, that's for sure. 
Come on, rest stop. I'm needing you now. Where are we at? There we are. here I wonder where I'm gonna park I've complained about this in previous videos this is one of those stops where I don't know where they're gonna let me park yeah 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 I'm still trying to figure out where I'm going I'm gonna have to park in that very far left spot that way I can jackknife this thing to get out of there. Otherwise I'm not going to have a spot to put it. It is going to stick so far out. Our little jeep, just go ahead. Just I'll stay consistent. Holy cow. Copper. Yeah, I'm going to have to hop that little concrete curb up there and leave it in the morning. These rest stops don't let you, they don't give you an inch as far as parking wherever you want. Really hate that you got to park in a parking space. But I think we'll end the video here. We'll, we'll get our sleep and then we'll finish this trip in the morning. So I'm going to go off to bed. Until next time. Yeah, that's right. I'm pulling in the wrong way. I'm like a boss.